Hi there, it's Linda here. Thanks so much for joining me today as I play with some new goodies in my stash. Uh, I blame Therese. She has been telling me how wonderful the watercolour brush markers from Ulta New are and the new Obsidian Black Ink. So I've got myself some of those and I'm playing with them for the first time. As you can see, here's the gorgeous colours. I've just tested them out and, and that way I've got all the colours uh, kept with them to show what they'll look like. Um, as you water them down and straight from the pen. So today I'm playing with this gorgeous new Ulta New uh, floral set called Forever in Love which has two beautiful floral sprays in it and I'm using the larger of the two and I'm going to colour up these two beautiful roses uh, a couple of different colours. So first of all starting off with the purple wine colour from the watercolour brush markers Tropical Fiesta set and I did love these markers, they actually were very easy to use. I loved the brush tip on them more so than my zigs, which is all that I've got as far as other watercolour brush markers go. I did at times find that I'd get um, quite a heavy blob of ink uh, from the tip, so you'll see me opening the markers off to the side sometimes because I was so worried that that blob might fall out onto my uh, coloured piece. Um, thankfully I didn't have that happen but I do use an acrylic block and I put a little um, pool of the colour on the acrylic block and I sometimes pick it up from there with my watercolour with, with my aqua or water brush and I'm just starting on this petal now to start mixing two colours so I'm now using sun kissed as well and these two colours do go beautifully together and I do love the uh, end result that I get on this rose. So it's a simple process but it is a quite time consuming process so I have had to speed up the video. There you see quite a big dollop of ink come out um, and thankfully it's stayed in the right spot so <laughs> I had no dramas and you can just see each time how I add the sun kissed and then blend the two together with my aqua brush. I've got a fine, a medium and a large aqua brush and I mostly use the fine or the medium on this card today. So it's um, quite a time consuming process, the water colouring, so I have had to speed it up. But it's not a difficult process, it's just a matter of going back and adding layer upon layer just to build up the amount of colour that you want because it does sort of fade out as it dries. So let it dry a little bit, see what you think, and then go back and add some more. And as you do that, the time gets away from you, and before you know it, it's sort of 15, 20 minutes, and you've been watercolouring, but it's such a beautiful result at the end, that, and it's um, very therapeutic too, so I thoroughly enjoyed the process. I do try to put, um, or just keep these tips on the petals that little bit lighter, and you will see me at times, particularly on the second rows, you will see me taking away colour with a tissue um, because I do really like to achieve uh, some light and dark with my colouring. I don't like it when it all looks uh, the same intensity. So um, on the first rose, because I use the two colours often with the sun kissed or the orangey colour, uh, that tended to be a lighter point on each petal. But with the second rose, because I just stuck with the one colour and used just purple wine, I often did pick up some of the colour with the tissue just to make sure I was achieving those highlights on my petals. So building up the colour, you'll see me sometimes dragging it out from the base of the petal and other times you'll see me dragging it uh, back in towards the base of the petal uh, like I do there. <laughs> um, to get the intensity in the base where you want it and to have it a bit lighter on the tip of the petal where you don't uh, want too much intensity of colour. So layer upon layer, building it up. These are a beautiful marker. They're quite a long uh, marker to hold, but um, certainly gorgeous colours and a lot of ink, a lot of intensity of colour. And so I really did enjoy playing with them today. And Therese has been saying to me she likes them more than her zigs. And after my first play, and this is my very first play you're seeing here on video, I didn't um, even muck around at all beforehand. I just did the swatch with all the um, sample colours and then I got straight into this. 
So if I can do it like this on the first go, I'm sure anyone can. It's really uh, a fun little process and nothing too difficult. So just building up those colours, going back between the two, adding more to my acrylic block when I need it. Sometimes I go straight from the block to my uh, flower. That's a very easy way of controlling it and I know I'm not going to get too much all at once in that way. And this petal that I'm working on here now, I really did want it to be quite uh, deep in colour because it's sort of hidden at the back. So I do build up quite a depth of colour on this flower because I feel it's hidden at the back and it definitely would be in a bit of shadow. Going back in, adding some more colour to the base of the petals, trying to blend it out a bit lighter onto the edge. And then, now that it's dried, going back into the centre, the very centre of the rose and building up the intensity right into those petals at the base of each one just to give you that contrast which is what makes your flower look more uh, realistic. So dragging it out, lightening it on the edge and then moving on to the second rose and I just use as I said before purple wine on this rose so because it's just the one colour, I do often grab my tissue and take away some of the colour that I've just put down, which seems a bit crazy, really. You sort of drag the colour out like that and then you grab a tissue and you blot it off, like you see me doing here. And it just gives you that little bit of highlight or a little bit of lightness that just helps bring your flower to life. And that's one thing I love about watercolouring, just those... um little elements that just seem to make the flower look more real. So adding the intense purple wine to the base of the petals and then dragging it out with my aqua brush and then using the tissue to sop up or take away some of the colour so that it's not too dark in places. Getting the uh, little highlights on those petals where you've sort of got the tip of the petal or the lip of the petal where it might curl over and um, usually you try to make sure that those uh, little portions are a little bit lighter. Nice deep colour in the ends there where the, the base of the petal and this petal here, the one in the middle there trying to make it quite um, deep and dark because it's sort of hidden in under everything else as well. So I'll leave you with this last bit of colouring for the rose here and I'll be back when I'm up to the leaves. Onto the leaves and I used the two greens from the Tropical Fiesta set. Sweet Leaf is the deeper of the colours and Lime is the lighter of the two and I'm putting the darker colour, Sweet Leaf, on the bottom mostly, bottom of the petal, uh, bottom of the leaf I should say, and the Lime on the top and then as I get around to those leaves at the bottom of the pink rose I put the darker colour in at the base of the leaf and the lighter colour towards the tip. Um, this is my first layer of course, so I get down these two colours and 
I'll let you watch that now and then I'll be back uh, to sort of talk through uh, what I then do to add a bit more interest here you see I've got a bit of a blob of the lime so I use that as a little bit of a paint palette and I drag it from there so lucky that it just stayed on the leaf um, which is amazing because this is not heat embossed so I'm very lucky that it just stayed where I needed it to so as I said I'll leave you with this first layer and I'll be back when it's time to add some more detail Now it's at this point that I'm going back with my uh, watercolour or my aqua brush, my water brush, to the little palette or the puddle of uh, the sweet leaf ink that I've got on the acrylic block and I'm adding more of that to each leaf. Sometimes you just see me go with the brush around like there around the leaf just taking off a little bit of colour that's got in the wrong spot because I am going to fussy cut this later. Right now here I'm going back in with my water brush and putting in some water and then sopping it up so that I can remove some of the color to get that highlight that I do love. So taking away ink from each leaf to give you that highlight sweet spot there. Uh, not on every leaf but just dotted around the bouquet and then it's just a matter of going back in again with the darker color, the sweet leaf, and adding a bit of texture so just some dots on most of the leaves into the darker part of the leaf adding a number of dots just to give it a more mottled watercolored look and adding a bit of texture and I love the way that looks and that's uh, my leaves just about done then it's a matter of fussy cutting once everything is dry there could well be a dye for this, um, I haven't even checked, but I was quite happy to fussy cut it. But while it's drying I'm getting my background sorted and I'm using this Alta New Grid stencil with some texture paste from Jo Sonia. And I want this to be quite a sparse smattering of texture paste. I did do two there as you can see, the one on the left is a lot more thick coverage and looks uh, to me it's not really the look I'm going for so I wanted the more random sparse spreading of the texture paste. Then some foam tape on the back of my fussy cut bouquet, a die cut word for my sentiment and some gorgeous coordinating sequins and my card is complete. 